All right. This right here is the Mongol Empire. This empire was the largest contiguous empire in history and only second in total area behind the British Empire. It began with the unification of the various tribes of the Mongolian steppe and ended with the separation of the empire by brothers and descendants of a great conqueror. All right, now let's take a look at this empire. But before we look at this empire, we need to talk about how it unified and to talk about the unification we have to talk about the unifier and that man was a certain someone called Genghis Khan also called as Genghis Khan although his birth name was Temishin at the age of 8 Temishin was sent to his to be wife's house while his father was on his way back he was poisoned by some warriors and he died after stumbling back home after this his tribe abandoned them and so they were forced to look after themselves here he met his current blood brother and to be enemy Jamakha he was then captured by the tribe that abandoned him after trying to flee after killing his half brother he then escaped and made his way back to his wife's home he then made an alliance with ong khan recognizing him as his father and he was thus offered protection by ong khan hearing of his marriage the market tribe kidnapped temujin's wife so he took the help of jamakha and ong khan and attacked the markets and took back his wife after this though a rift widened between jamakha and temujin and in the end temujin won out even defeating ong khan as well as the tatars he then also managed to defeat the Karaites to his south, and so it was that in 1206, somewhere on the Onon River, Genghis Khan was declared as the Khagan, which means emperor, and thus began the Mongol Empire. Now, if you know anything about this empire, you know what happens next. They settled down in the conquered lands and become a prosperous trading nation. Except no, they did not, and Genghis decided to invade literally everything. His first target was China, or more specifically, the three Chinese kingdoms to his south. The first one of these was Western Xia, whom Genghis chose as his first target. He first invaded in 1207, sacked Wuhai and then left. He then again invaded in 1209. Here he tried to lay siege to the Xia capital in Yinchuan, but they were not the most experienced people in siege warfare and ended up flooding their own camp. Nonetheless, he managed to capture Western Xia and then turned his eye towards the Jin dynasty to his east. The Jin were much stronger and larger than Western Shia and they had even built up walls to hold the Mongols at bay. Genghis invaded and won many battles at Yehuling and Mukden before capturing the Jin capital at Jongdu and the Jin emperor surrendered. But then he moved his capital south to Kaifeng which Genghis did not like and so he invaded again. He recaptured Jongdu a modern day Beijing and sacked it. There were also some Jin deserters who taught the Mongols how to lay siege to a city. Even with this, he was not able to completely subdue the Jins, so he extended his territory to the coast of China, left a general in charge and turned his attention west towards Khwarezm. Khwarezmia was a kingdom in modern-day Iran, to which Genghis sent two separate trade delegations and both of them were executed. Genghis did not like this and so he invaded Khwarezmia, governed by Shah Alaaddin Muhammad. He invaded through the Zungarian Gate and the Tian Shan Mountains and ravaged the Khwarezmian lands and the Shah's son Jalal al-Din took over the kingdom and fought the Battle of the Indus River where he was defeated and fled to India and Genghis didn't bother chasing after him. This was the last conquest of Genghis Khan because after this he died in 1227 and after two years he was succeeded by his second youngest son Urgadai who was crowned Khan in a Kuruntai in 1299. Urgadai, like his father, expanded the empire and also created a permanent capital at Karakoram. He first sent troops to subdue tribes in the Russian steppes, like the Bulgars, the Bashkirs and others. He pushed all the way up to the border territory of Ryazan in the Kievan Rus by 1237. While all this was happening, he also invaded the remnants of the Jin dynasty in Manchuria and with the help of the Song dynasty, also invaded the part of it to the south. Thus, in the year 1224, the Jin dynasty ended and only the Song dynasty remained as a Chinese dynasty left for the Mongols. After the Jins, Ogadai invaded the Goryeo dynasty in Korea and later Gochong, the king surrendered, but then revolted and massacred the Mongol occupiers. He then looked towards the northwest, towards the Kievan Rus, and so from the province of Ryazan he invaded and defeated them and occupied their lands. He also temporarily invested in an invasion of India and took over a bit of Kashmir. He also agreed to accept Korea as a client state and sent Mongol princesses there to get married to Korean nobles. After this, he prepared for an invasion of Europe. The Europeans stood united against him and there were two separate major battles. 
The first was the United Hospital of Teutonic and Templar Standard, the Battle of Legnica, which the Europeans won. And the second was the United Hungarian, Croatian and Templar Resistance at the Battle of the Sajo River. The Mongols won in this battle, opening the road to an invasion into Austria, but they didn't advance any further because Agadai died. Following Ogadai's death, his wife Turgenne took over and ruled until the next Kurultai, which was called in 1246. Here, the ill and drunken Goyuk was chosen as Khan, who only ruled for two years. He planned on a massive conquest of the Middle East, but he only got a bit of Anatolia before he died. Goyuk was succeeded by his wife, Ogil Kalmish, who later stepped down because she lacked the skills to rule. The nobles offered the crown to Batu a great general, but he refused and instead nominated Monka, descendant of Genghis's other son Tolui, rather than the traditional Urgadai line. A Kurultai was held in 1251, which confirmed Monka as the Khan, even though the Urgadai and Chagatai nobles opposed it, as they believed only the descendants of Urgadai were eligible to become Khan, and after Monka was elected, he led a purge against them. Monka did what Guyuk didn't and invaded the Middle East, and in 1258, Baghdad, the capital of the Islamic world, was besieged and taken by the Mongols. He sent his brothers Hulegu and Kublai to rule Persian and Chinese lands respectively, and subdued Korea to pressure the Song from all sides. Monk died in 1259 without any clear successor, and two of his brothers started a civil war to control the empire. The first of these was Kublai, who was declared Khan in the city of Kaifeng, having support from Hulegu who controlled the Ilkhanid as well as having support from the Chinese lands. The second of these was Arik Waka, who was declared Khan in Karakoram, who had support from the lands in Europe called the Golden Horde, as well as the Central Asian lands called the Chagatai Khanate. In the end, Kublai did win out, but his victory sowed the seeds for a permanent division of the empire, following the Toluid Civil War, the Berka Heluku War, and the Kaidu Kublai War. Nonetheless, he ruled over the Chinese lands and created a new Chinese imperial dynasty, called the Yuan dynasty, and in 1273, the Mongols finally finished off the Song dynasty and ruled over the entirety of China. He also invaded Daivye, but he failed completely and was destroyed at the Battle of Bashtan. He also tried invading India, but like his ancestors, he failed. His reign also marked the beginning of the Pax Mongolica, the Mongol peace, similar to the Pax Romana. This period also saw skilled foreigners being moved from Europe to different parts of the empire through the Silk Road, including a Venetian called Marco Polo. So in the end, the legacy of the Mongol Empire is extremely complicated. Kublai died in 1294 and the empire would forever remain disunited. Genghis Khan and descendants built the second largest empire in all of history, all the way back in the 13th century, but in doing so they destroyed and depopulated most of the Asian continent. It saw the first non-Chinese dynasty to rule over China, and it also saw temporary truces between the Christians and the Muslims, as they both realized the Mongols were the larger threat. The Mongol descendants began the Mughal Empire in India. After Kublai, the Mongol Empire never again stood united, and the Mongol Empire was effectively reduced to the Yuan dynasty.